Tutorial 5 Logic 2 and Controllers, Part 1 This is the second intermediate level tutorial and we will dive even deeper into the world of logic. We will continue from our last lesson where we covered the basics of logic, explained the idea behind event-driven game design, and experimented with common events and actions. We will start by loading MoFish3, the result of tutorial 4. As you may remember, MoFish3 contains a single fish sprite that swims left whenever the left key is pressed and stops when the key is released. If the fish goes beyond the boundaries of the screen, it will immediately reappear from the right and resume its movement from there. To make things a bit more interesting, we will add an enemy to the game. Our enemy is going to be an evil fish that our hero fish must not come into contact with. By the end of this tutorial, we will have an enemy fish appearing from the left and swimming towards our hero fish while we try to escape. First, we create a sprite, calling it enemy fish, and giving it a swimming animation. For its animation, we will use the Mo Enemy Fish 1 to 4 PNG files. Accelerating the animation to 200 milliseconds should give us a nice smooth animation. We will place our enemy in front of our hero fish near the left edge of the screen. This would guarantee that once we move our fish to the left, it will collide with the enemy fish. Running the simulator, we can see that the hero fish simply swims through the enemy and nothing occurs when they collide. The right event for the job is the collision event. This event is triggered when the collision state between two sprites changes. We will use it to respond to a situation where our hero comes into contact with an enemy fish. The target of the collision should be the animated fish. Collision start should be selected. The two collision condition options appearing at the bottom are simply two ways of checking for collision, with pixel level being more precise and bounding box more efficient. We will leave it on pixel level. In response to the collision, we would like to eliminate our little fishy from the game. This is done using the destroy action. As you can see, the destroy action is pretty straightforward and has only a single option for configuration, the Applies To box. This box appears in most of the actions and determines the target of the action. As you can see, the default is Self, which means the sprite would act upon itself. In our case, that would make the enemy fish be destroyed, which was not our intention. The list is dynamic and depends very heavily on the context, such as its hosting event. Some events, such as collision, have more than one object as their context. Collision has self, which refers to the current sprite, and other, which is the object that the collision occurred with. In our case, that would be the hero fish. Another useful option is using the group target 
Once selected, another drop-down appears where the group may be chosen. This option is used when the target of an object should be a group of objects, such as if we want to destroy all the enemies in our game, or make all rocks fall in a different direction in a different game. Let's select Other and run the game in the simulator. Pressing the left key, the fish moves until it comes into contact with the enemy fish and disappears. It is now time to give the enemy fish the initiative. No longer will it just sit there and wait. We will do that by giving the fish some speed and a direction and destroying it once it leaves the screen. The last part is very important because you must remember that although the enemy is no longer visible, it still takes up resources and can eventually hurt the performance of the game. As a rule of thumb, all unused objects should be destroyed as soon as possible. Going into the Logic tab of the enemy fish, we will add a Created event. This event will be triggered whenever an enemy fish is created. Let's give it some speed using the set speed action and set it in our direction. Next, we will have it destroyed once it leaves the screen completely. As you may remember, this is done by adding a position event to the enemy fish, which is triggered after the fish leaves the screen from the right and placing a destroy action within it. Let's run the game in the simulator. As you can see, this game is unfair. The enemy fish is coming right for us and we have no way to escape. The time has come to give our fish the ability to move up and down so it can avoid the enemy obstacle. We already have similar logic that causes the fish to move left. Let's mark the left key up and left key down events and copy and paste them. A question dialog greets us, letting us know that an event with the exact same property already exists. We will reconfigure the event to respond to the up arrow being pressed instead of the left. Now, the same for the key up event. Our new key up event is required to stop our fish from moving and therefore does not require any changes. The key down event, on the other hand, requires the direction of the action to be modified to point upwards. Finally, let's repeat the entire process for the down arrow. Very good. Start the simulator.
See the way our fish can now move up and down? Finally, we can escape the grasp of evil enemy fish! Although our game has started to have some sort of gameplay, it is still rather dull. Having the enemy fish appear in the same position every time makes our game quite boring. We would therefore like to create our enemy fish dynamically and place it in changing locations.